Artists for Israel is officially a community of creative individuals working together in ongoing projects expressing Israel's right to exist. What that means is that we are out there not just countering the propaganda and misinformation within the arts community against Israel, but we're actually making our own art and creating our own narratives and teaching people all the beauty and strength and the factually supportive information that shows Israel to be a peaceful, loving country, but we're doing so through the visceral and emotive form of arts. Every couple times a year we bring artists who are often non-Jewish to Israel to paint bomb shelters, work with kids who have uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and who continue to have stress disorders. We work with students in underprivileged areas painting their schoolyards. We wanted to bring some of what we do there over here and let people become aware of it. We built a bomb shelter, just like the ones you'd find in Shterot or throughout Israel. Uh, and we built it to exact specifications because we want the people of New York to realize what actually happens. There's a lot of rhetoric on both sides, but if they see the actual shelter, it's as if they're dealing with the reality on the ground in Israel. Craig Dershowitz, who is the head of Artists for Israel and the founder, is a Birthright Israel alumnus. And he created a bomb shelter, a different one from this one, this past summer, which was on view at a gallery in the Hamptons. And we went to see it and we said, this is something that would really resonate with our alumni. We feel that just as Israelis in Israel are seeking shelter from the bombs that are falling on them, uh, New York Jews, young people, and everybody who supports Israel, they need some shelter too from the hate that's being spewed about Israel. Having the bomb shelter in Washington Square is so amazing because I never knew the size of the bomb shelters. And I look around at all the people that are just walking around, walking their dogs, and I could just imagine how the Israelis are just walking around their daily life and hearing a siren blast and knowing that in 15 seconds they have to run into the shelter. And they all have to huddle in fright knowing that they are tr somebody is trying to kill them. 15 seconds is not that much time. Consequently, a fantastic art therapist in Israel named Shahar Bar, her, Shahar Bar created a song for all elementary school, school children to learn to do how, how to deal with situations like when a bomb is flying over your school. It starts with the word Seva Adom. So far, the reaction has been very positive. People more or less understand what's going on, the struggle over in the Middle East. And uh, if they're not, if they're not informed, then they appreciate us informing them about it. What's here? Seva Adom. Seva Adom. The line is hurry, hurry, hurry. It's a bit dangerous. Hurry, hurry, hurry. We need to go to a safe area. I, I like the idea that you have something physical that you can see and relate to. Not many people have ever been inside a bomb shelter, and it's a pretty interesting experience to go inside it. Uh, I also think it's just, it's in a good area. It's, you know, a lot of people are, can see what's going on here. I was just walking by, and I'm a Jew, and I'm an artist. I'm an artist and I'm a Jew? That's the question. But the thing is, this is a very important issue for me, because as an American Jew, or an American, or as an artist, or simply as a human being, I'm so troubled by what's happening in the Middle East, in, in Israel, but I'm also troubled by the attitude of many American Jews and intellectuals who seem to think that they have a right to judge Israel and who are holding Israel to an impossible standard. I find that people couch their anti-Semitism and criticism of Israel. The other side. I was in Gaza. I was in Gaza last year. I performed. We get negative responses from everyone. Anytime that you're trying to do something creative and original and unique, people are threatened by it. Uh, in fact, if you saw the press today, people were very threatened by us showing the reality of this bomb shelter. Uh, we love the hate. It just means that we're, people are paying attention. We're doing something right. A lot of the media and newspapers aren't covering Israel and the bomb shelters anymore. And seeing this as an art form is letting people that are just coming by visualize what it's like to live at that in Israel with this kind of war going on. My name is Yudit Teichman. I go to NYU. Um, I'm 19. I actually lived in Israel for four years in the south. And last time in 2008, my school was evacuated because of the war. 
and I've been to Sterlot, I've experienced it, and like this is this shows it, but not even close to like the actual experience of having 15, 12 seconds, whatever, to run into a bomb shelter. And I'm 19, and I had trouble, and I've been there once to Sterlot, and I had to deal with that. The kids there they have to deal with it every single day of their lives. And like all my friends who are from Stiro and who are from Ashdod and Ashkelon who have experienced this, I just don't understand how people can see that as as normal, a normal way of life. And it is, that's the normal way of life in Israel now for those people, just canceling school because they can't go to school because of bombings. It's not only about death, it's also about the emotional impact this has. People can't con take, like there's Israel tests called Bagruts, people can't take them because of the emotional impact. They can't focus on such a long period of time because it's 15 seconds. Every five, every second you think you have 15 seconds to stay alive and people who are gonna go inside and see that, yeah, like I saw people's expressions, they don't have any idea and that's what's so hard that people are saying all these anti-Israel, not even just like not like just not understanding because they don't know what's going on. If they knew the situation, I feel like people would be different. I think it's more about awareness that there is this reality in Israel and people don't see that. They just see what, what's on the other side of the border. But it's happening on both sides, and people are maybe people aren't dying because they somehow seem to keep missing, which is um, amazing, and I'm very thankful for that. But there is so many rockets being fired into Israel every day. There's no other pro-Israel group that's doing what we're doing, uh, using arts to tell Israel's story, and uh, connecting to a generation and a demographic that hasn't been connected to, young people, uh, university students, artists. So that's why this is a one-of-a-kind thing. This shelter, uh, we hope, will be traveling to campuses around the tri-state area, and the alumni on campus will be helping us to do similar activities like this where we need them. If your campus or your organization would love to have it, please be in contact with us. Info at artists, the number for Israel, dot org, artists for Israel. Uh, and we'd love to bring it and organize it at uh, your school or location. I can't say what you can expect next because it's uh, always a secret. We've done off-Broadway theater, we do of course graffiti, we've done hip-hop, rock concerts, uh, movies. We have a few tricks up our sleeve and I can tell you that even Banksy, the world's most famous street artist, uh, is shaking his boots at some of our plans right now. And we continue to build what we like to call the security fence against cultural terrorism. We are the biggest pain in the side of the BDS and the PACBI. No